everyone welcome to this session in environmental geography in this session we are going to discuss about desert biome so we have heard a lot about biomes in past lectures so in today's session we are going to discuss about the desert conditions about the characteristics about the important human adaptation about plants and vegetation and also about the flora and fauna relationship in desert biome so let's understand that now before we go further please like and subscribe to my channel the geoecologist now let's understand that deserts are the regions where evaporation exceeds precipitation the basic definition of a desert is or the understanding of a desert is an area where evaporation the rate of evaporation exceeds supersedes the rate of precipitation it means precipitation is lesser and evaporation is more in this condition there are mainly two types so hot that is hot deserts of the saharan type that is very famously known and the temperate as the mid latitude deserts like gobi deserts that's in terms of the hot deserts when we are talking but there are also cold deserts that we already know that is about antarctica and other places in himalayan region so let's understand now further the desert biome covers about 1/5 of earth's surface now 1/5 of earth's surface is a huge area okay so this biome has 1/5 of earth's surface under its command now this biome has a larger layer of soil that can neither be sandy or it can be gravelly or it can be stony so sand gravel or stone these are the three important compositions of the land surface that is the soil surface right now this depends upon the type of desert so either it is a sandy desert or a gravelly desert or a stony desert that will depend upon the presence of that particular material now deserts usually get mostly 50 cm of rain that is about 20 inches of rainfall in a year so it's too less if you calculate per month okay and the organisms that live in deserts are adapted to this particular condition that is the dry climate all right now let's understand hot desert climate first so the aridity of hot deserts is mainly due to very important remember this terminology that is offshore trade winds hence they are also known as trade wind deserts so remember because of offshore trade winds offshore is which is away from shore shore is near the ocean and land meeting point so offshore is in the continental aspect right when in the lands so offshore trade winds hence they are also known as trade wind deserts because they are largely influenced by this kind of particular kind of wind now the major hot deserts of the world are located on western coast of continents remember this is a very interesting line western coast of the continents if you see continental margins especially between 15 to 30 degree north and south you will find most of the deserts of the continents lying there but remember this question has already been asked and can be asked in future in many competitive exams as well so what is the reason now before we go to reason let's understand the distribution through this world map the biggest that is sahara desert is 3.5 million square miles great australian desert that is there in the if you see and then arabian desert we have iranian desert we have thar desert in india kalahari and namib deserts you see that in the world map right so deserts are hugely widely distributed across the continents right so in north america the desert extends from mexico into united states and is also called by different names at different places for example mojave sonoran californian mexican these are the classifications according to united states desert right now let's understand what happens in south america the atacama or the peruvian desert because peru chile these are the areas in the western coast if you see so peruvian desert is known as the atacama desert and remember atacama desert formation will discuss rain shadow effect is one important point now rain shadow itself is saying that it is shadow area for rain so rain doesn't reach that side why because of the andes mountains in the between so what happens it is in the leeward side not in the windward side so there are two sides so this we'll discuss later on when we are discussing about the orographic rainfall in details and offshore trade winds another important point so that's why atacama desert becomes one of the driest 
okay remember driest of all deserts with less than 2 cm of rainfall so that is important point to remember that out of all deserts across all continents atacama in the peruvian desert that is the least in terms of moisture so it is driest of all now let's understand the mid latitude desert climate so the first important thing is that they are also known as temperate deserts because it's mid latitude so tropical and then temperate so temperate deserts are rainless because of either continentality that is their interior of the continent or the again the same reason that is rain shadow effect okay so gobi desert is one of the best example that is formed due to continentality and the patagonia desert that is due to rain shadow effect so remember these two examples so gobi desert and the other is patagonia so gobi desert is in china patagonia is in south america right these are the two major examples of mid latitude that is the temperate deserts for you now understand that there are more deserts that we name so these are ladakh okay that is remember ladakh is northern part of india so that is cold desert in nature then we have kizilkum turkistan okay so now we have several other deserts like so gobi desert the klimakan then we have central asia so those are drier portions of the great basin desert of western united states as well then we have patagonia deserts of argentina which you can clearly see in the image that is in the map of world right so wide distribution of this mid latitude desert is also available on earth surface now patagonia desert for specific is more due to its rain shadow position okay because of again the extension of the andes and it is on the leeward side of the lofty andes so remember if there is a question on why a particular situation of a particular biome of desert these are the two major reasons one is offshore reason that is trade winds that are continentality part is another reason and the third is the rain shadow effect so explain these three features three characteristics because of which desertification happens deserts are formed right apart from the geological impact so geology is a prime region okay so first thing is to understand the geology and geomorphology of the area and then if you talk about above the surface of earth then it is the climatological aspect that governs the biome formation so remember three points first point is continentality second point is rain shadow effect okay and most importantly third point is the leeward side that is the important point if there is a mountain range in between the other side doesn't receive any rainfall so these are important points to remember and don't forget the trade winds that is the third important point now desert climate let's understand that in terms of rainfall both hot and hot and cold deserts so deserts whether hot or mid latitude have annual precipitation that is less than 25 cm sir okay and remember atacama that is the driest place on earth it has practically no rain at all the name itself is driest place on earth now rain normally occurs in violent thunderstorms formation because of convection because of intense low pressure formation of intense heating so it bursts suddenly and pours continuously okay so there is a sudden burst sudden continuous pour of in a few hours lots of rain happen so what is the impact thunderstorm leads to flash floods so it is disastrous consequences for desert landforms because of this particular acute low pressure formation flash floods happen and that's why there is destruction and violence in this particular climate now major hot deserts in northern hemisphere are located between 20 to 30 degree north why is it so now this is an important question which has already been asked in many examinations so do you know why let's understand this the hot deserts lie along horse latitudes or subtropical high pressure belts these are two important places where the air is descending right a condition least favorable for precipitation because now it has lost the moisture and it is now descending so first important point is the descent of air in that condition then rain bearing trade winds blow offshore and westerlies that are on onshore blow outside desert limits now this is important to understand in terms of wind which carry moisture so what happens the rain bearing trade winds blow offshore okay that's why what happens there is dryness in the interior isn't it and westerlies that are onshore blow outside the limits that's where 
this condition is there for the dryness now whatever finds reach the deserts blow from cooler to warmer regions and their relative humidity is lower so what happens winds blow away from remember cooler region to the warmer region that is because of the low pressure in the warmer region so hot air rises up and the cool air blows towards that and remember relative humidity that is rh is lowered making condensation almost impossible the descent of cold air it makes condensation almost impossible so that is a major reason then what we have is there is a scarcely any cloud in continuous blue sky now remember because it is a continental area moisture is not there and continuous clear sky is there in that situation so what happens relative humidity is extremely low that decreases from 60% in coastal districts to less than 30% even in desert interiors so that is the level of relative humidity which is important factor for cloud formation now under such conditions what happens every bit of moisture is evaporated okay because there is no moisture so no cloud formation will happen and deserts are the regions of permanent drought so there is a prevalence of permanent drought situation in this area precipitation is scarce and very unreliable so scarcity is important and also unreliability remember so on the western coasts what happened the presence of cold currents as well is important again gives rise to mist and fog by chilling the oncoming air so this is another reason now you find here is the that's most of the western coasts which have cold currents that is another reason for this particular point the air is later warmed by the contact with hot land and little rain falls so what happens this leads to for example you have cold peruvian current that is very famous example along the chilean coast in south america the northern part of south america and so what happens the mean annual rainfall for atacama desert is so less less than even 2 cm that's the main reason so when you explain your answer put this reason along with the world map in which you show this particular area the cold current on the western coast and that particular region right that's how you write your answer now temperature of hot deserts so this is very famous example of azizia that is in libya 57.77 degrees c that is the highest temperature ever recorded and that's there is no cold season that is one important point to mention that there is no cold season in this particular biome and averages 30 degrees c the reasons for high temperatures are very obvious that is clear cloudless sky intense heating solar insulation dry air and rapid rate of evaporation so these are the major reasons for the high temperature then coastal deserts by virtue of their maritime influence that is the moisture coming from the sea breeze and the cooling effect of the cold currents have much lower temperatures okay that's only in case of coastal areas where you have deserts so the desert interiors for example however experience much higher summer temperature right so diurnal range of temperature becomes very important you remember that desert area heats very quickly and also cools very quickly so extremity is there so what happens between two extremes of temperature there is a difference so what happens average diurnal range varies from 14 to 25 degree even okay so that's a huge range of diurnal range of temperature in bond now climatic conditions in the mid latitude let's see the mid latitude ones so what is there the inland basins lie hundreds of miles from sea that is very common and are sheltered by high mountains around them so what happens they are cut off from the rain bearing winds again there is no moisture that's why so occasionally depressions may penetrate so this happens in asiatic continental mass area and occasional there is a some kind of cloudiness involved due to their cold and elevation as well in particular areas like ladakh we have snow falls in winter so it is completely frozen in winter and annual range of temperature is much greater why because you have extremes one where you have freezing one you have heating so what happens there is a difference and continentality accounts for these extremity in temperature so that remember the phenomena called continentality that is the interior location in the continents where you have a particular geo climate now winters are often severe that is important point to remember so if you remember the cold deserts ladakh for example it's a huge area where you have severe winters then you have freezing lakes and rivers and strong cold winds that is important point now 
now let's understand the desert vegetation the predominant vegetation of both hot and mid latitude deserts is xerophytic or drought resistant remember when we say xerophytic or drought resistant that's common word okay so they are called xerophytes so these includes cactus thorny bushes long rooted wiry grasses scattered dwarf acacias which we in hindi say babool so trees are rare except where there is abundance ground water available so for example date palms are grown in those particular areas along western coastal deserts if you see washed by cold currents where you have remember peruvian coast atacama desert support a thin cover of vegetation intense evaporation is one factor and because of what happens then salinity of soil is another point because water evaporates and salt is accumulated so these forms hard pans there and those hard pans have a terminology that is called playa or bajada these are terminologies that you should remember for your multiple choice questions ever if you face now let's understand that absence of moisture retards the rate of decomposition and desert soils are very deficient in humus so if you talk in terms of dead decay plants and animals they are very less in number that's why not much of humus is there not much of detritus is there in the desertic condition right and what happens most desert shrubs have long roots why because in search of water they penetrate longer ground surface and they have longer roots and they are well spaced to gather more moisture so this is adaptation of plants and plants have fewer or no leaves and remember the quality of leaves is waxy leathery hairy needle shape to reduce what the loss of water okay because it's extreme area where you don't have lots of water moisture available and also if you have flatter leaf then transpiration will be more so to reduce transpiration these are the two important points here now the seeds of many species of grasses herbs have thick tough skins so tough skinned thick grasses are there which lie dormant now talk about the desert fauna the animals and birds let's look at that so animals such as black tailed jack rabbit okay are also adapted to this kind of desertic life they have extra long ears you know for what to transfer the excess heat from their body so this is animal adaptation right certain examples like desert fox in chile adax antelope death stalker scorpion camel very commonly found amdillo lizard then you have thorny devil rock hopper penguin these are certain list that i have gathered for you people there are more animals you can add on to this list but these are very important and many of them are also in specific endangered categories as well because of climate change now now let's look at the last part of this session that is about human adaptation so what happens even if it is inhospitable still there are certain different groups of inhabitants who are there who live in this condition in desertic condition now let's look at that so the settled cultivators are one of them that is first one so who are settled there so the life giving waters of nile if you remember the nile part it had made possible for egyptians 5000 years ago that was in desertic condition so what happens modern concrete dams now because we have aswan and sena dams so they have now agriculture in the region and there are modern settlers there that's why so in same way desert cultivators rely on indus in pakistan tigris euphrates in iraq and colorado imperial valley of california these are the places where you have water availability that's why you have civilization there isn't it in ladakh what is there indus okay so the same indus that goes to pakistan so there are regions where you have water availability there you have settlement of a permanent nature that's why in the deserts wherever there are oases there are some form of settled life so some of them are abnormally large like if you see the example in morocco it's important to understand that tefia lalit that is a great oasis in morocco has 5000 square miles of area okay a wall is usually constructed around the oasis to protect it for you know from the violent storms and those storms are sometimes called simums so this is another terminology that you should remember then most important tree is the date palm that we already know and other crops cultivated include maize barley wheat cotton cane sugar fruits and vegetables so it is rich where you have water there you have settled cultivators but what about others let's see the mining settlers it was gold mining that was important especially in great australian desert where you have some of them like 
Kalgurli and Kulgadi. These have become two important towns of sizable number. In Kalahari, if you see in Africa, the discovery of diamonds and copper brought this particular mining settlers there. And remember, there is a terminology called thirst land. Okay, for this because you know thirsty for something. Now. Even in the most arid Atacama in northern Chile, what you have is large mining camps. Okay, and remember, it's important that it is established for the mining of cemented gravels that is called calish, from which sodium nitrate is taken away, right? And it is a valuable fertilizer, as we know, sodium nitrate. So it becomes important source there. Now, beside nitrates, what do we have? Copper mining in Thar Desert. Also, we have copper mining. If you see now in Chile. That is a particular place. So it is Chuki Kamata, which is world's largest copper town. So remember, similarly in deserts of North America, what do you have is silver is mined in Mexico, uranium in Utah, and copper in Nevada. So if you see these mining settlers, you'll find in particular areas where you have certain mining sites available. So in recent years, what has happened? The discovery of oil in many parts in Sahara and Arabian deserts has also led to this transformation. And Saudi Arabia, Iran, Iraq, Kuwait, Algeria, Libya, Lebanon, Nigeria. So many countries. Can you see in the list? These are important oil-producing desert countries specifically. So what is there? A settlement related to oil extraction or mining. So that is where these two major settlements are there. Now let's look at environmental issues, the problems here. So what are those? Global warming is a major thing that is increasing the incidence of drought activities, right? So already these areas have very little moisture, and because of this climate change and global warming impact, there are this moisture which are already drying up very fast. So this is important point, and then higher temperatures again, increasing number of wildfires. So whatever species is there of flora fauna is disturbed by these wildfires in desert landscapes, eliminating all those slow growing trees. So already there is a problem, and then wildfires take it more extreme. and irrigation used for agriculture it may lead to long term problems like it leads to salt levels in soil because there is heavy evaporation so what happens this is another problem that there is a salt in soil which is left and it becomes arid and not fit for agriculture then grazing because there are many settlers or there are many uh, people or there are many uh, tribes which have completely they they rely on completely on desert animals and also on grazing animals because they have lots of animals they have lots of sheep and other kinds of they have goat and that's why what happens because of this particular reason overgrazing becomes one of the important point and that leads to further extremity in terms of the desertification now another important point that i found is potassium cyanide it's a toxic agent used in gold mining so remember it is poisonous but it is used in gold mining that is another environmental problem creation now off road vehicles when used irresponsibly also cause irreparable damage to desert habitats now people don't realize that because of this vehicular intrusion into those particular areas those burrowing animals and plant life is even disturbed because of that also now oil and gas production that is already disruptive and it's not sensitive to the proper habitat so that is another issue and lastly nuclear waste they are also being dumped in certain interior of those deserts which have also been used as nuclear testing grounds in some parts in india especially in thar desert we have a particular location where we have testing ground so this has a long term impact so these are certain environmental problems related to human beings okay and which impact those particular conditions in desert bio right so thank you for watching and subscribing to this channel the geoecologist now i hope about the desert biome things are clear you can write your answers and please remember that you practice your writing answers every day so thank you so much for listening stay safe stay tuned thanks a lot